begin this morning by standing and singing together hymn 635, We Are Called to Be God's People. Good morning. Welcome everyone here on the uh, sixth Sunday of Easter and Happy Mother's Day. There are announcements in the bulletin. Uh, preschool graduation is on Wednesday. Last day of preschool is on Thursday. Uh, do we have any other announcements? Then we will transition to prayer concerns um, as you see the list in your bulletin. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody else have any prayer concerns? So let's all do remember Keith and uh, Terry and our prayers this week and Pastor Betty's mother um, is under hospice care. So remember her and her family too and everyone else that's on our prayer list. So this morning, instead of having a prayer, I have a poem for Mother's Day. So it's it's not it's a, a sort of a prayer, but not a real prayer. So we don't have to bow our heads. But mothers with hearts as vast as oceans deep, their tender care an endless well to keep. Through triumphs and trials, they're always near. Their love, a radiant light, we hold so dear. God bless these women, these precious souls who guide us through life's highs and lows, with gentle hands and loving eyes. They teach us how to be strong and wise. We thank the women who came before us, who gave their hearts without a rush, their wisdom and eternal gift, their love, a legacy that will always live. So here's to mothers, past and present, whose love and care is truly heaven sent. We thank you, Lord, for every mother, and we honor them now and forever. I invite you now to stand as we read and pray together our liturgy for Christian homes, and you'll find this on page 119. 
Please stand. Eternal God, creator of our first home and our only true rest, we gather as your family to celebrate our diverse homes and to seek your blessings on them. God of relationships, you have put within our hearts a longing that only you can satisfy. Yet we need each other to learn of your steadfast love throughout all generations. Open our hearts that we may learn. God, our creator, in the garden you formed our first parents and found them good. At first, in their innocence, they trusted you and they helped each other, but they sinned and fell short of your purposes for them. You called Sarah and Abraham to go out from their homeland and began a new nation in covenant with you. In their old age, you gave them a child whose name meant laughter. In our homes, may we live with their trust and courage, their humor, and their sense of mission. Increase our faith and give us grace to answer your call. You strengthened Ruth and Naomi in the face of grief and bitterness to remain loyal to each other and to journey to new life. When you came to earth, incarnate God, you had no place to lay your head. God of the stable, bless the homeless and bring them to a place of shelter. Keep us aware and give us grace to be family together. Rejoicing Savior, you sanctified marriage by your presence at Cana in Galilee. You restored life and health and balance in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Be a holy guest within our homes, filling our ordinary days with newness of life and mutual joy. Grant us the grace to recognize you as the Christ among us and to open to your miracles of change. Suffering God, from the cross you cared for your loved ones, saying to Mary, Woman, behold your son, and to the disciples, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her as his own home. Bless all families and enable them to form new bonds of love. Offer us in our brokenness and give us grace to claim our relationship as your children. Life-giving spirit, you came in power to form and guide the church, a family with varied gifts and graces. Grant that church and home may model for each other the nurturing of individuals and the growth of community. We recognize the difficulty of forming families with those who are different from ourselves and with those who are like ourselves. We confess our failure to love and grow, our impatience for others to change and our blindness to, our, to one another's needs. Yet we rejoice that you have given us each other and we dedicate ourselves to mutual support and love, trusting not in our own strength, but in your strong compassion.
centered worship, you had the opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. Always remember that it is to God that we give our praises, our prayers, and our gifts. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and almighty God, what a privilege it is for us to be here in your house together today. And Lord, we thank you that we know that you are God that provides all of our needs and more. And Lord, we are grateful and we are thankful people. And so Lord, this morning we bring back just a small portion of what you have given to each one of us. And we give this freely to you. Give and give into the church so that the ministry of the church might grow and that we might reach others in our community. Lord, I pray that you will bless the giver. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us now continue our service with the reading of God's holy word. Our scripture today comes from Acts 17, 22 through 31, Psalm 66, 8 through 20, 1 Peter 3, 13 through 22, and the Gospel of John 14, 15 through 21. Hear now the holy word of God. First reading, Acts 17, 22 through 31. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars had this inscription on it, To an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands cannot serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. From one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far away from any one of us. For in him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him, for he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he approved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. Psalm 66, 8 through 20. Let the whole world bless our God and loudly sing his praises. Our lives are in his hands, and he keeps our feet from stumbling. You have tested us, O God. You have purified us like silver. You captured us in your net and laid the burden of slavery on our backs. Then you put a leader over us. We went through fire and flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. Now I come to your temple with burnt offerings to fulfill the vows I made to you. Yes, the sacred vows that I made when I was in deep trouble. That is why I am sacrificing burnt offerings to you, the best of my rams as a pleasing aroma and a sacrifice of bulls and male goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God, who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his unfailing love from me. 1 Peter 3, 13 through 22. Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing wrong. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison, those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it is not looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Loving Father, we thank you today for your love. We thank you for the love that you have placed in the hearts of our mothers. A mother's love can never be measured. It's endless. We thank you for adopting us into your family through the miracle of your eternal forgiveness and grace. Thank you for calling us to be brothers and sisters in Christ to each other. Today we pray also for those, Lord, who have lost their mothers and who are feeling grief and sadness. Help us, Lord, to know that when your love reigns in our hearts, your love reigns in our lives. Lord, we need you. In your word, you tell us today, if you love me, obey my commandments. Teach us, Lord, to obey your commandments and to abide in you and to hold fast to your truth your love, your hope, and your peace. Teach us, Lord. Help us to hold fast to the heavenly vine for the fullness of all your blessings. Help us to rest and abide in you. Help us to remain in communion with you in every phase of our lives. Clean our hearts and our minds of the clutter today, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to your truth. Lord, I thank you today for my voice. And I thank you for the ability that you have given me to speak your truth. Fill my mouth with your words, O oh Lord. You speak your truth to your people. And I will step aside. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Where there's a quote that says, To those who see with loving eyes, life is beautiful. To those who speak with tender voices, life is peaceful. To those who help with gentle hands, life is full. And to those who care with compassionate hearts, life is good beyond all measure. Today in our scripture, Jesus is teaching us that life is mostly what we make of it. When we apply God's precepts in our life, life is abundant and good. And when we reject and go against God's precepts, we find that life can be difficult and we lose our peace. On this Mother's Day, Jesus said, Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. So if we love God, we're going to obey him. We're going to love him. Therefore, our life is mo mostly what we might make of it. If we obey God, 
We love him. We obey his commandments. If we reject him, we refuse to love him, and we do not obey him. Easter and Jesus' resurrection opens the door for new beginning. It opens the door a sense that what lies ahead for us. And we know in our scripture text, in the next few weeks, we'll be going over all of this. Jesus' ascension into heaven, and then his sending and the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's important for us to understand what Jesus wants us to remember, that he does not leave us orphans. We are never alone. He is always with us. And Jesus also says, in a way, help is here now. The Holy Spirit is here now. Jesus promises, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Jesus has alluded to the Holy Spirit before, but this time he gives the Holy Spirit a job description, and that job description is the advocate, one who counsels and defends. He is with us. We're never alone. Wherever we go, the Holy Spirit lives within us and is going with us, no matter where we go. You know, when we think about the Father as our creator, we think of the Son as our redeemer. And these are all familiar uh, images to us that we have as God the creator and Jesus as our redeemer and our savior. And, of course, we know that when Jesus was here on earth, he went about doing good, healing and teaching, and he was really a miracle worker. There were so many miracles that were performed during his time here on earth. We see the image of Jesus growing up from a tiny baby to what I call this tiny baby was God with skin that came to this earth to be here, and then he was later as a man sacrificed on the cross for our sins. God's divine plan God's plan set in motion, and his son becomes the risen Savior, the living Savior, the only living Savior. There is no other. When we explain God the Father, he is the first person of the Trinity. So when we think of him as being God's son, Jesus is a part of the Trinity. And then we have the Holy Spirit. You know, there seems to be a lot of times, it's like people say, well, I don't understand this God thing. I don't understand. It's so difficult. Or it's mysterious. God's God. And if we could understand everything that, about God, we would be God. But we're not God. I can tell us today we are not God, okay? Okay. And it's sometimes very hard to explain. And it's really hard to explain to someone that is refusing to believe or rejecting the Lord. You know, when we think about God's love for us and Jesus' love and going to the cross, what examples we've had set for our mothers and our fathers to imitate that love but a lot of people do not have that. They do not have the loving mothers and fathers. Not everyone is blessed to have that. But one thing I can assure you of, that God the Father, he is our Abba Daddy. And I've told you this before. It's just a perfect example that, as I said, when I was younger, I used to think of, of God is this big, huge God, and he was in a chair, and I would just go up, and I would just like climb right on his lap and be there and know that I was safe and that he loved me. He's our Abba Daddy. God is love. 1 John 4, 8 says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. 
God's example of love should motivate mothers and fathers all over the world to love their children and to love others. The Bible, God's holy word, truly is God's love letter to us. Have you ever thought about that? That it's a love letter that God has written to us. And it's written in a way that it, we have the Ten Commandments. We have ways and instructions for living a righteous life. And God unfolds this whole story of his divine plan coming through his son, Jesus Christ. And then Jesus, being risen from the dead, then his ascension, and then we realize then the day of Pentecost and then the receiving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit coming to dwell within us, to be able to teach and instruct and lead us. Matthew 3, 13 through 17, Mark, Mark, Luke, and John all agree Jesus came from Galilee to John the Baptist at the Jordan to be baptized by him. After Jesus was baptized, we know the story. The heavens were open, and the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. I love that visual picture, and we've seen paintings of that. Jesus was declaring his love for his son and his obedience. Jesus was obedient to God the Father. John 1, 32, then John gives his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me. The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. Speaking the words of John, that he is the spoken one. When we think about the Holy Spirit, the imagery of this is sketchy at best. It's very hard to explain. It's not like we can hold it in a box or get it in a box. It, it, it's, it's there. It's everywhere. It's, it's, all, it's within us. It's, it's leading us. But that's hard to explain. We see pictures of God as the creator. We see pictures of Jesus. But trying to explain sometimes the Holy Spirit is much more difficult. When we think about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming, this Holy Spirit, in a sense, is a moral compass for us to help to teach us how to live our life. Where we're to go. Do we go this way or that way or this way? But do we listen to the Spirit? That's the question. God gives us free will many times. We go, and we know we're going down the wrong path. But we don't stop. We just keep going down that wrong path. When God is saying, this is the way I want you to go. Keep your eyes focused on me. But we go our own way. And when we go our own way, we lose our peace. And we lose that sense of feeling our flesh is weak. Let's face it. We need an advocate. We need this comforter to be with us, to lead and guide and teach us. I am so glad that I feel it's just with me. And did you feel that sense? And that when you have the question of, and people say, well, I didn't, I didn't feel like anything was telling me not to go this way. Like, well, that's because you wanted to keep going that way. The Spirit was talking to you, but you just weren't listening. And many times that's what happens. We lose our peace. Our flesh is weak. But that's why Christ tells us that the Holy Spirit will not only be within us, will be all around us, surrounding us, protecting us. 
dwelling within us, leading and guiding and teaching us. When I think about today's gospel, uh, these words that Jesus said, they're not trivial. This is a deep lesson. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you will understand that what God is calling you to do, he's giving you instructions. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Pretty plain, pretty simple. Only a few words. Jesus frames his words and they're strong. They're strong words. If you love me, if, if you love me, you're going to obey my commands. You're going to obey me. Jesus invites us. These two keys are love him and keep his commandments. That's pretty simple, is it not? Just love him. Love God. Obey him. Keep his commandments. How simple can that be? So really, life is mostly what we make of it. We either obey God, we love him and obey him, or we reject him. And if we re reject him, we certainly don't love him. Remember, we're on this path. We're going our own way. We don't want to go our own way. We want to get back on the straight and narrow. We want to stay focused on God, on the Father, on Jesus, and on the Holy Spirit. We want to be led by the Spirit. If we love God, we obey his commands, we will reject sin. You just don't mix the two. We won't want to sin. We won't want to think about evil things. We won't want to go our own way. We, don't, we will not want to do things that he does not want us to do. If you love me, you will obey my commands. That's what he's saying. Remember in Matthew 6, Jesus tells that we can't serve two masters. You can't be the master of your soul and the master of all your life. That's got to be the Lord. If you love Jesus, you're going to obey him. When John 14, Jesus continues to drive home his words and he says this. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be one who loves me. And anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I shall love him and show myself to him. Wow. Loved by God the Father. Loved by Jesus. He's going to show himself to us. So I ask you today, how much do you love God? How much do you love Jesus? You know how much God loves you? He loves you so much that Jesus stretched out his arms on the cross for you. And Jesus died on the cross for you and for your sin. That's how much he loves you. So never be afraid of coming to him. It's never too late. There's a, it's always a good time to come to him. Always. First Peter 3.15 says this today. You must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Jesus calls us to love him and obey his commands. I want to close with this story. It's entitled, Do You Love Me? You can close your eyes or you can just kind of go along with me here. One day I woke up early in the morning to watch the sunrise. 
Ah, the beauty of God's creation is beyond description. As I watched, I praised God for his beautiful work. As I sit there, I felt the Lord's presence with me. He asked me, do you love me? I answered, of course, God, you are my Lord and Savior. Then he asked, if you were physically handicapped, would you still love me? I was perplexed. I looked down upon my arms and the legs and the rest of my body and wondered how many things I wouldn't be able to do, the things that I took for granted. And I answered, it would be tough, Lord, but I would still love you. Then the Lord said, if you were blind, would you still love me? How could I love something without being able to see it? Then I thought of all the blind people in the world and how many of them still loved God and his creation. So I answered, it's hard to think of it, but I would still love you, Lord. The Lord then asked me, if you were deaf, would you still listen to my word? How could I listen if I was deaf? Then I understood listening to God's word is not merely using our ears, but our hearts. And I answered, it would be tough, but I would still listen to your word. And then God asked, if you were mute, would you still praise my name? I could praise how could I praise you without my voice? Then it occurred to me, God wants us to sing from our very hearts. It never matters what it sounds like, and praising God is not always a song. But when we are persecuted, we give God praise with our words of thanks. So I ask, though I could not physically sing, I would still praise you. And the Lord asked, do you love me? With courage and strong conviction, I answered boldly, Yes, Lord, I love you because you are the one and true God. I thought I'd answer well, but God, why then? Why do you sin? He asked me. I answered, Because I'm only human, Lord, I'm not perfect. Then why in times of peace do you stray the furthest? Why only in the times of your troubles do you pray the most? I had no answers, only tears. The Lord continued, Why only sing at fellowships and retreats? Why seek me only in times of worship? Why ask things so selfishly and unfaithfully? My tears continued to roll down my cheeks. Why are you ashamed of me? Why are you not spending more time in spreading the good news? Why in times of persecution you cry to others when I offer my shoulder to cry on? Why make excuses when I give you the opportunity to serve in my name? I tried to answer, but there was no answer to give. You are blessed with life. I made you not to throw this gift away. I have blessed you with talents to serve me, but you continue to turn away. I have revealed my word to you, but you do not gain in wisdom and knowledge. I have spoken to you, but your ears were closed. I have shown my blessings to you, but your eyes have been turned away from me. I have sent you servants, but you have sat idly by as they were pushed away. I have heard your prayers, and I have answered all of them. Do you truly love me? I could not answer. How could I? I was embarrassed beyond belief. I had no excuse. What could I say to this? With tears in my eyes, I said, Please forgive me, Lord. I am unworthy to be your child. The Lord answered, That is my grace, my child. I asked, then, why do you continue to forgive me? Why do you love me so? The Lord answered, because you are my creation. You are my precious child. I will never abandon you. When you cry, I will have compassion and cry with you. When you shout with joy, I will laugh with you. When you are down, I will encourage you. When you fall, I will raise you up. 
When you are tired, I will carry you. I will be with you till the ends of the day. I will love you forever. Never had I cried so hard before. How could I have been so cold? How could I have hurt God as I have done? I asked God, how much do you love me? The Lord stretched out his arms, and I saw his nail-pierced hands. And then I bowed down at the feet of my Savior. And for the first time, I truly, truly prayed. Today, Jesus is calling you to go forth. Today, Jesus is calling you to make the most of your life. He's asking you to love him, and he's asking you to obey him. He's calling you to share your love and your faith with others. When you do this, you will be blessed beyond belief. Today I'd like to close with the prayer of St. Francis. Let us pray this prayer today as your own personal prayer to God. Let us pray. Lord, make me a channel of your peace that where there is hatred, I may bring love. Where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. Where there is discord, I may bring harmony. Where there is error, I may bring truth. Where there is doubt, I may bring faith. Where there is despair, I may bring hope. Where there are shadows, I may bring light. And where there is sadness, I may bring joy, the joy of the Lord. Lord, grant that I may comfort, that rather than to be comforted, that I may understand rather than be understood, that I may love rather than be loved. For it is by forgetting self that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. And it is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to please stand for our hymn and departure. Blessed be the ties that binds. Number 680.
of the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.